Okay, so this is uh, Real Disciple. We've got Jane Nimrod here. Uh, the Look at me with the perfect clouds. Yeah, yeah, there you go, man. You're in heaven already. That's right. <laughs> Straight from heaven. Jane Nimrod is in, in the fourth heaven. Get, right. Get yourself in the middle. Okay, there you go. Um, so we did already the um, truth about hell. So we said that we were going to do the truth about heaven. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right, let's 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 dive into this so that we don't take up too much time. All right, so what I've put here first is heaven in the Old Testament. I've put just one scripture that references this many that we could use. Deuteronomy mm -hmm. 26, 15, look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the land which you have given us just as you swore to your fathers, our fathers, uh, a land flowing with milk and honey. So my understanding in the new, in the Old Testament, um, we don't really see heaven as, we, we, the, 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 the Old Testament doesn't describe the fullness of heaven as where we're going to go and all the things that we see in the New Testament. But mm -hmm. that what I got from it is that heaven is a place of God's throne. Obviously, mm -hmm. the scripture I read, heaven is where God dwells. It's mm -hmm. his vantage point. When he speaks about mm -hmm. heaven, uh, God has that vantage point, and it's a place where yeah. God rules. Yeah. And what, what would you add to that? Um, from from the Old Testament point of view, I, I wouldn't really add much more to it. Uh, you know, you you do understand that the uh, the old the, the old Israelites understood that God was in a different realm, different place than they were. Um, but uh, in terms of their own relationship with heaven, I would have thought that people from the Old Testament never thought that they would go there. I know, you know, you read what Jesus said in um, the New Testament, or not Jesus, um, the book of Acts, uh, where Paul talks about the difference between the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and he talked about the resurrection, because Sadducees don't believe in any kind of spirits or anything like that. So, um and, and the reason I say that is because I would think, you know, the Sadducees only function in the first five books of the Bible, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the Sadducees would have got, would believe the rest. And from that point of view, the scope of heaven and, and, and eternity was very limited. And so they only saw heaven as a place where God dwelt. And, and, uh, and you know, I don't know, man, if you think about what the Sadducees believe, it's a bit weird. I mean, well, for us anyway, that here is God in heaven all by himself, all alone. And uh, here's human beings on earth who are going to die and never go to heaven. You know what I mean? Who have only this life here on earth. It's kind of like this God is this uh, God just why, you know? There's no relationship really. Is just that we're just the created beings, you know, and that's that's how it looks to me. Old Testament, uh, especially the first five books, give you a really limited view of what heaven is, you know. Do, do, you know, like um, we're going a little bit back on what we spoke last week, but you know, like with uh, the whole concept of Abraham's bosom. Mm -hmm. So, um, in the Old Testament, these Jews when they died, they believed they were going somewhere though. They believed that that wasn't the end of, that wasn't the end of it. Well, so obviously well, not all, I mean, all the, of, the, not all of them. The, those yeah, who the did Pharisees believe, didn't. Yeah. yeah, the, the Pharisees, the, those who did believe that they did believe that, um, they were going somewhere. Um, what yeah. about, you know, where, um, when when um, David speaks, do you think he thought he was going somewhere when he speaks about the child dies, or do you think? He yeah, was... yeah, you know, David. I think David was one of the early ones to kind of come to a point. You know, David was a prophet. Um, yeah, David came to a revelation that there was more to life than this earth. What did he say? He said, "I shall go to him, mm. but he shall he shall come back to me." You know, something to that effect. And I think David was like on that progressive road that progressive revelation where he understood that once you die that is it your your life in this earth is is done you can't come back here but it doesn't mean that it's ended you know what i mean you're in another plane of existence where you go to when you die and so i think david david man god really was start to 
revealed things from the time of David onwards. Yeah, I do believe David is ahead. I think that's part of when, you know, there's something about David, which is um, he is ahead of his time because yeah. David was the one that understood grace. In a law yeah. system, he still yeah. understood grace. He had, yeah. a, had a, revelation, a revelation of grace, even though he yeah. lived within a law system. All right. Yeah. I, I think the good thing about, I like what we're doing here is that we're, we're, well, what we're trying to do um, is show people that, because I think a lot of people, you know, that I've spoken to from the last video when we did about hell, that they didn't realize that you only get a limited perspective on heaven and hell in the Old Testament. They just yeah. assumed that a lot of these references that people had about heaven and hell they were all over, you know, they were in the Old Testament yeah. and the New Testament, yeah. but yeah. they're not. And so the Old Testament only gives us a very limited perspective. And that's why when Jesus comes, he brings the revelation. Jesus is the deep one, not the Old Testament, yeah. the New yeah. Testament. Jesus is the deeper one. Yeah. Um, and so, so many times people get, uh, they like the, um, what's the word I, I, I use? It's more exotic. The Hebrew words are more Oh yeah, I know a few Hebrew words. Also yeah. That yeah, 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 yeah. But you realize the Old Testament is a very limited perspective. Very limited. It's God's word. Yeah. It's God's word. It's the it's the undercoat before the overcoat. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, you know, there's many references to heaven, but the descriptive of wh what goes on there is really a New Testament idea. You know, yeah. uh, mainly so. And 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 that's the thing. I mean, you read about Isaiah. Uh, especially Isaiah talks a lot, um, you know, and 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 uh, and and that's what Christ came to do, isn't it? Christ came to really reveal the Father and reveal the, the the inner workings of things, rather than just the you know you know the Old Testament. You see a lot of the judgments and whatnot, and you think that the God of the Old Testament is different from the God of the New Testament, but Christ came to make you understand the things that happen, you know, why things, why you saw things play out. And so heaven may have been a concept in the Old Testament, but it's in the New Testament we, we get what goes on there, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very good. All right, let's go to this now. Yeah. Heaven in the New Testament, um, big thing is obviously eternal life. That's what we're all about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Jesus says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Yeah. In my father's house, there are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. So yeah. now Jesus is revealing to mankind that, you know, in as we believe in Christ, as you believe yeah. in God, you believe in Christ, he is the access into heaven. He is preparing yeah. an eternal yeah. resting yeah. place. I use the word rest as in from the toils of life um, yeah. for us. Um, I'll put some scriptures here. Uh, God's presence, um, obviously where he resides, no more suffering. That's a big one. Mm. That heaven is going to be a place where there's no more suffering. Um, worship. Uh, we see a lot of worship going on in heaven. Um, inheritance and rewards, Matthew 5, Luke 6. And then reunion and, and fellowship. Mm -hmm. Give me your um, breakdown on some of that. Well, you know, it's heaven is, is everything. Um, earth isn't uh, for, for one. Uh, you know, uh, th there's that distinction, you know, it's a, you know, earth life, temporal, heaven, eternal, earth life, suffering, heaven, you know, there's, there is, there's peace. Uh, and, you know, I, I would also add the idea that no more suffering, uh, because there's no sin, you know, and, and, and that's the thing there is, you know, what makes earth, you know, we see earth as a beautiful uh, a world, but what makes earth horrible in a sense is us and our sin and what we do to one another and and seeing heaven as a place where our nature has changed you know yeah. what i mean and because we have changed uh you know i understand no more suffering because that's the kingdom of god and god does not like but also to a degree the fact that we have been changed we can't inflict suffering on others and others can't inflict suffering on us and I, I think it's a powerful idea that uh, 
who we are is com we are completely different in heaven. You know what I'm saying? We are, you know, human beings. Are, we are. We identify with suffering. You know what I'm saying? Um, you watch the TV programs. You know a lot of. You know you think about them. The, if you show a, a movie where there's no issues, nobody's going to be watching it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Everyone living in peace and harmony. That'd be the boringest movie in the history of humanity, man. But you introduce suffering and pain and anguish. And yes, it's the idea that we overcome it. But the fact is, uh, drama sells, suffering sells, uh, 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 heaven, uh, uh, you, you know, and this is the thing for some people, heaven, the concept of heaven is going to be boring. But the truth is, you are changed. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be a changed person that you're going to enjoy being there. You know, because one of the reasons I think people don't really like talking about heaven is that is is exactly that. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, it reminds me of that old uh, joke about a crane and uh, a dove. A dove descended from heaven and landed near a near a lake where a crane was fishing for snails. You know, on the mud on the muddy shores. And so uh, the dove says, "You know, I've come from heaven." And uh, the crane's asking you know, what it's like, and the, and the dove is explaining. And then the crane says, "Is there any snails in heaven?" And uh, the, the 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 dove says, "No, there's no snails in heaven." He says, "Well, I don't want to go there then," you know. And and there's there's something about human nature, man, that worship. You mean I'm gonna be worshiping for 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 um man? You know, we can't even endure twenty minutes. During a, during, a, during a church service, man. And I'm just going to be sitting there worshiping forever and ever and ever, man. Man, man, that don't sound like a, a great place to be. That sounds, that sounds like torture, you know, but you're going to be changed. You know what I'm saying? Your nature is going to be changed and you're going to love it. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to be created the way, or we're going to be the way we should be because sin is no longer a part of the equation. And so, a lot of times people look at heaven as a boring thing, and it's because, sad to say, it's a carnal mindset. You know what I'm saying? And it is when we start to become more spiritually minded that these things are things that we look forward to. That's that's one of the things I would say, you know? Yeah. Um, Revelation 21, verse 1, now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. And the first heaven and the first earth have passed away. Um, and he starts to speak about, what, what's the bit I want to say? Okay, verse 4, that's it. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Um, and then right at the end of 21, he says, verse 27, um, but there shall be no means uh enter it no means enter it any that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie but only yeah. those were written in the lamb's book of life so that's the point i was making that this place is a place where there's no pain there's no nothing but there's also no defilement yeah there's there's there's, there's no um no sin entering in and that's that's really the problem that causes us uh, all of this madness and it's funny that man wants his sin but he never likes the result of sin that's just the nature yeah. of us isn't it we want sin, yeah but we never like the results of sin yeah you know the you know we we're doing a bible study yesterday in church and we we're talking about the helmet of salvation or the helmet the hope of salvation one of the things i think a number of christians struggle with is this idea of the pie in the sky you know this is a lie that really has it's like a, it's a, like a, 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 an attack that we uh, we take personal, that we're some morons that's looking for the afterlife. You know what I mean? That we're, you know, here's the life here on earth, and rather than fix this life here and make things better, we're waiting to for to, for pie in the sky to go and meet Jesus when this earth is the only heaven you're gonna get. And it's like it's making us look like we're people with our heads in the sand. That we're 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 morons. We're allowing uh, life to beat us up. Uh, we we're being passive in our attitude uh, because or we're looking for heaven. And you know, a lot of Christians have have believed that we're morons like that. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't I don't serve God for rewards. That's another mind that 
that may seem spiritual. Oh, I don't have those kind of motives. I just serve the Lord because I serve the Lord. I don't serve God for rewards. Why does Jesus say it? You know, why does he say it all the times, especially in the Beatitudes? You know what I mean? Uh, uh, what you, you do in secret, your father will reward you openly. Why does Paul talk about it? The crown of rejoicing and the, the, and, and the crown of life and all these different crowns. Why do they speak about living for, in a sense, uh, the, the, the rewards of being in heaven and what God's going to give you? They look forward to it. And I think that's one of the things that gave them endurance as they suffered things for for the gospel's sake, is the fact that they were going to be rewarded. And, and for us to say, well, that is a bad motive, uh, is for us now to kind of undermine the very thing that helps us to go forward. And the truth is, a lot of times it may seem spiritual, but the truth is we're really governed by materialistic thinking, earthly mindset. We're looking, we're, we're looking at this life, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's in this life we're satisfied, especially in Western society, where we have so many things going for us. Um, uh, we don't we don't think about the afterlife because hey, life is pretty good for us here right now, you know. And so, for all our spiritual talk, uh, the reality is we are lot, we are a lot carnal because we don't have the hope of salvation. We don't really think about you know one day I'm going to be in eternity with Jesus, man. And there won't be no more pain or suffering or death. And and you know what, man, this is going to be the great life, man. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think that's one of the problems with us. We're not that heavenly minded, you know? Yeah, the, God has made us. I think a lot of things, let me, let, me, let me start again. I think a lot of things that go wrong with mankind or in the world is that they're just misdirected. Yeah. Misdirected. So sex is good. You just misdirect. Yeah. The world just keeps misdirecting it. Yeah. Um, and so uh, 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 desiring for praise. There's nothing wrong yeah. with desiring to be praised, yeah. Yeah. but it, do you want to be praised by man or by God? Yeah. Because God will say, well done. That's yeah. what God will do. He will say, well done. We see that in the scripture. That's a praise. Like, hey, well done, bro, man. Well done. Mm -hmm. And so it's the misdirected. So what you're saying is, is that rather than you trying to, den there's, there's a few ways we can go wrong here, is either you live for the praise of the world Obviously, most Christians would know that. That mo well, most Christians used to know, but Christians would know that's wrong. Then, yeah. rather than I'm not living for the praise of the world, I'm just going to not live for no praise. I'm not. Yeah. Gonna, I'm going to deny yeah. myself no praise. I'm a worm. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. And that's not really the motivation either. That would be, yeah. you know, more of that monkish monastery type of yeah. Uh, yeah. lifestyle. What we should be doing is seeking the praise of the Father. Yeah. seeking heavenly rewards jesus yeah. says listen stop your riches in heaven yeah exactly listen do it all for heaven you know yeah. something that's human something that god has put within us that we were meant for praise but it's misdirected and when you have that desire that you're living your life today and tomorrow and next week next month next year and as you're living your life you're thinking what am I doing today that God, how would God see what I'm doing today? Will God say, well done. Yeah, I like that. I like the way you forgave that person. I like the way you was patient with that. I like the way you helped your wife. I like the way you love your kids. I like the way you preach the gospel. I like the way you wasn't ashamed of me. I even like the way you suffered for me when you could have just got out by saying something different or denying the gospel. And that is what should fuel our Christianity that one day, just like the Olympian, practices all year for that one moment that they get to perform. But that's even not what they're, they're not even really aiming for that. They're aiming for that one moment where they stand on the pedestal and they get the reward. That's really it. And that's what we're, aiming yeah. for. that's what yeah. we're, we're, we're looking for that. Our whole life is really for that one uh, moment where we're going to be on the pedestal. Yeah, but the truth is, how much of us think like that, you know? I mean, it's there as a thought at the back of our heads, but does it govern our life, you know? You know, where well, Jesus again... Watch is, this, this is going to revolutionize their life. This is like the best podcast in, in the world. This is the number yeah. one podcast in yeah. uh, 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 Thamesmead, SE20, whatever. 
Well, you know, again, where Jesus said about, um, you know, lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where uh, a moth does not corrupt and do not break in and steal. Um, for your treasures, your heart will be there also. Um, the idea is that, you know, we, you know, here in this life, we're thinking about, you know what, let's save in our bank account. We're going to put the money towards a mortgage one day, we want to buy a house. And we have all these plans for uh, 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 for our life here on earth. But when we do what we do, do we think about it with eternity in mind, with heaven in mind? The fact that, you know what, man, hey, you know, whenever I give to church or world evangelism or church planting, whatever it is, man, you know, what? I, I'm actually investing in what I'm going to get. We, You know, to a degree, we don't think like that. And, you know, part of us is like, well, I'm thinking about what we get, I'm getting. The, the reality, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right, you know. Uh uh, but it you know, it's it's a mindset of that somehow it's wrong to think like that. Or what 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 drives that mindset to say it's wrong? I mean, right there, it's in the Bible, it's shown very clearly. Why is it wrong? Or do you somehow subconsciously believe that it's embarrassing to believe something like that? You know what I mean? Um, you know, and uh and and so you know, do we think when we do what we do? We are laying up treasures for ourselves in heaven. And I was, you know, the, the reality is life is too tough and difficult for us to be going, oh, more money in heaven for me. Well, you know, that's not how it is. You know what I mean? But at the same time, we must have that mindset to help us to, to, to look forward to these things. And we don't, because if we don't, if we, we aren't like that, we're going to, we're either heavenly minded or earthly minded. There is no middle ground. You know what I'm saying? You can't be partially this and part. You, if you're heavenly minded, you're going to be focused in that direction. Where your heart is, where your treasure is, your heart will be also. It's going to be one direction or the other. And so the more heavenly minded we are, the more we, we're able to, 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 to overcome the issues of this life, I, I, I would think, you know? Yeah, I think it's processing it through that filter. And then yeah. like a parent, a parent, it's the last to get dressed, the parents, the last to eat, go toilet, pay yeah. bills. But you process everything through that. Like a husband, it's yeah. just part of life. You process <clears throat> everything through that reality. Yeah. And if we process, we're not saying go to bed, hide under your bed, and, yeah. um, you know, don't get <clears throat> out, stay there reading the Psalms all day. But you process life through that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. Yeah. You're processing life through that. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Uh, a new actually, before we get to that, one other thing quickly is that when the Bible speaks about the kingdom of heaven, yes, this is not always in the New Testament. And I, I didn't put any slides with this, but it just occurred to me the Bible is not always speaking about like the place heaven, it's yeah. speaking about the rule and the reign of God, yeah. God's yeah. domain. You've come under God's domain, so when you yeah. You know, like you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. I believe it's more than just getting to heaven. It's about being part of Christ's uh, 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 kingdom because we are in his kingdom on earth. The kingdom yeah. of God is here now, but still to come. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, uh, Matthew would have said kingdom of heaven as opposed to kingdom of God in Luke and, and Mark because... He's writing to Jewish audience and uh, using a God, the word God frequently. It's something, you know, really frowned upon in a sense. But it's the same thing. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom. And, uh, and, and so uh, you're right in that sense. It's, it's speaking about the rule and dominion, the, the domain of God. And so, um, uh, I mean, the Lord's prayer, your will be done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it's in heaven. Uh, it's about that, isn't it? It's about how God, the, the protocols of heaven operating in and through our lives, you know? Yeah, yeah. Okay, good. Um, excuse me. This is now. So the new heaven and the new earth. We Man, see the, this. The, the new new earth looks like uh, from Windows. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Windows 95. <laughs> Steve Jobs has made the new <laughs> new heaven, new earth. <laughs> yeah. um, give me your, this is, 
this so this is okay i'll give you mine first so if yeah. so people always you know we think about it now we we die and we go to be with god yeah. um but there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth that means the old heaven is going to pass away yeah. the bible says and the old earth is going to pass away and he's going yeah. to make a new heaven and a new earth yeah. now we are going to be on the new earth and um this is why my belief let me use that word my belief is that we will still be operating from a perspective of doing things i don't think we're just going to be um singing songs all day i think we will yeah, be doing yeah, things yeah, because yeah. he speaks about uh where did i read it hold on let me see if i can find it uh in in 21 it speaks about uh, uh da, 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 da. okay verse 24 and the nations so this is the new Jer the glory of the new jerusalem let me read it from 22 but i saw no temple in it for the lord god almighty uh the lamb are are its temple the city had it needs no sun no moon to shine in it the glory illuminates it the lamb is the light the nations of those who are saved shall walk in the light in its light and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it so there's still going to be kings yeah there's still going to be like ruling and reigning and, and and doing things on the earth where a lot of people think we're just going to be um surrounded by fat babies with wings playing hard yeah. while we're singing songs yeah. but i yeah. believe it's going to be what god meant it to be it's going to be all the yeah. best parts of life times by a billion million um and it's going to be all of those things without depression sadness sickness getting old beef all of those things are gone and then we just get all the best parts even better mm. well you know um uh, uh oh the, the the new earth the whole idea is is everything rebooted the way it should have been uh but better when if adam didn't, hadn't sinned and so uh you know people are often confused about the new earth i remember as a new convert reading about this and i was like man i thought we're just going to be in heaven forever kind of thing but the old heaven before it's written away with the new heaven is is a is a temporal place for uh for christians who die uh before the resurrection and before the millennial reign of christ so to speak um and so when we talk about going to heaven absolutely when we die we go to heaven yeah true but that's not where god intended us to live for eternity God has created a new earth. And as you read Revelation 21, you kind of see the similarities between that and Genesis uh, well, 2 and 3 in that sense that it's a paradise. You know, it is uh, it is where, uh, you know, obviously through the cross, through, you know, okay, man's sin and redemption through Christ, God has made it better than it was had Adam not sinned. But nevertheless, it's it's that same idea. We're going back to what it was, and that and that's a powerful thing right there. You know, um, here's billions of people saved for the last uh, 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 two thousand years are going to occupy this place uh, where uh, uh, and and as you say, it's going to be more than just um, you know plucking harps and eating back and 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 relaxing and taking it easy. There's going to be a, a, a life, new life to be lived on this new earth. It's just that we won't have this suffering and, and insanity that we have here in this life. So I would say it probably takes the, the joy and the perseverance and the, um, the drive out of the Christian when the Christian just believes he's going to go to be a ghost on clouds. Yeah, yeah. But what the Bible says is there's going to be, like you've just said, what 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 it would have been in um, Genesis. And if you think about yeah. it, if Adam never sinned, there probably would have still been 
um, innovation. There probably yeah. still would have been architecture. Yeah. There still yeah. would have been music. There yeah. still would have been food and recipes. Absolutely. There still Absolutely. would have been art and color and joy. So in the new earth, we're going to have all of those things, but in a, in a, in a far greater way. And so yeah. if there's people living now, you're a Christian now, and you're like, ah, oh, to do God's will means I'm not experiencing some of the things that I've always wanted to do. You know, I've got a bucket list. And as a Christian, yeah, yeah sometimes you're not going to tick that bucket list. But wait, all God is saying is just wait. Trust me. Yeah. That, that It's going to be like, you know, you're going to be able to go to the Maldives and they'll be far better than they yeah. are now. You're yeah. going to be able to go to see um, the beauty of creation and the wonders of uh, travel and friendship and art and all the things that are good and music and you know, these things are not, like I said, a lot of it's just misdirected. So the, yeah. the Christian, God is saying, wait, serve me now. Uh, walk with me now. Um, don't make it all about this temporal broken world. How can you, this is why Christians are like, oh, you know, I'm confused about God. He's not good. God is like, this is the broken version. This is the, yeah. the, the malfunctioning yeah. version. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. um, Look past this. Your your new one is coming. The new computer is yeah. coming. You know, um, you can just sell. You can just send emails on the old laptop. But Apple have said, listen, we've got the brand new one coming for you at the end of this month. Just yeah. use that one to send emails. Yeah, but I wanna. I know. Just send emails, and if you do right with that, when we come, give us that one, and we'll give you the brand new one. And God is yeah. saying, brand yeah. new Earth, fresh yeah. new car smell, <laughs> and you've got a brand new body. And the joy yeah. of it, if you could just imagine the best parts of this life, the best glimmers of love, of family, of children, of friendship, the best of it, like those little glimmers that we get and then they fade because everything in this world fades. We only get moments, times them by a billion million, and that is what God is going to give us. Yeah. So that should drive us on and say, let, let's just keep moving forward with Jesus because this is. But it's to too good to be true. That's the mindset. Yeah, that's it's too yeah. good to be true, man. And it is. You know? It is too you good know? for us, but Jesus purchased it for us, man. Yeah, we don't deserve yeah. it. And and that's the thing about us as good. Do we believe God or do we not? You know, we only believe God when it comes to things that we can see or you know, right here in this, but that man, that's, that's too good to be true. You know I mean? Here am I living for eternity. I'm making sacrifices here in this life, man. And I'm only robbing myself. You know what I'm saying? You know, Hey, uh, nah, I'm not going to do that, man. You know, look at house prices in London, man. You're telling me the struggle through when I, I you know, because one day you're going to have a place in eternity, which is far better than that, man. Ah, oh, man, come on, bro. You know, we don't say it, but, you know, to a degree, that, that that's how we function. We want our goods now, here in this broken earth, uh, rather than realize, man, it is going to be so much better. I mean, you look at certain, I don't know about you, Corey, I've been to certain places, man, in the world, and I'm blown away by the beauty and the majestic, the majestic nature of it. And I'm thinking, man, and you know what, man? It's going to be better than this. It's going to be better than this, man, in the new earth. It's going to be so much better than this. And uh, all we're seeing is a glimpse of what it, it can be. But we can't make it everything. It's just a glimpse. You know what I mean? So this would this is what we would have thought that um, the Old Testament prophets were just glimpsing a bit of this yes. new earth. They weren't seeing, you know, into everything. But when they make Old Testament references about the lion, the lamb, and paradise and all of these things peace and that and the lord reigning and all of these things I, I would believe that they are seeing past all what we're where we are now and they're just getting glimmers yeah. of the new yeah. the new earth yeah. the new heaven and the new earth yeah yeah i'll be honest you know and and i'm not one of these uh, for visions and dreams man but i i have a few of those very few but mainly from the early days of a new convert I remember having one very vivid dream about being in heaven, man, or being in eternity with Jesus. And it was so vivid, man. You know, it was so powerful. And I'll be honest, man, that really helped me through a real 
dark point in my early Christian life. Um, just, just you know, and, and you know, there's only so much the human mind can really uh, 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 understand about eternity and whatnot, man. Uh, but it made a difference to me pushing through and, and, and still be here today, you know? And, uh, and, and so I would say that to uh, people, man, if you can focus on eternity, man, it will help you so much as you go through your struggles in, 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 in life, man. One day we're going to be with Jesus, man. One day all this madness, Russia, Ukraine, Israel, Palestine, China, Taiwan, all these nonsense, man, will, will cease and come to an end, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think there was actually one more. There was one more, wasn't there? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Quick, <laughs> excuse me. <clears throat> Quick one. So in the New Testament, we see this reference to the third heaven. Paul says yeah. in 2 Corinthians 12, 2, such a one was caught up to the third heaven. And then he says how he was caught up into paradise. Maybe that's what happened to you, Jay. You was caught up into the third heaven. Right. And and you've, you've, you've messed up, though, because you've made utterances that were unlawful. <laughs> um so first heaven is considered as the vi visible sky second yeah. heaven celestial bodies um i'll be honest with you I, I didn't know much about that i don't think it's in the Bi bible it's no. more jewish tr tradition the angelic realm and so and then the third heaven is where god resides this is the most holy so when he's saying he was caught up into the third heaven not in the sky not just where the celestial bodies are and the angelic realm, but he was in the pre he was in the holy of holies. He's where God is. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, we we don't really have much understanding what the you know um, the second heaven. I heard guys like I think Derek Prince and these guys and these guys are you know far more sc scholarly than I would ever be, man. And they talk about the second helm being. Uh, the angelic realm where demonic forces function and whatnot. It could be true. You know, it, you know, we're discussing earlier, man, it, it makes a lot of sense, uh, but I wouldn't make a, a biblical doctrine over the whole thing. But we don't, the fact we don't. that Paul we talked about the third heaven, we, we you know, it, 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 it shows that this is, he didn't just say caught up to heaven. He says the third heaven. Yeah. And uh, yeah, you know, uh, uh, that it's the highest highest realm, you know. It, you know, you know, second heaven could be the universe as we know it, and the third heaven is uh, is transcends uh, 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 this 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 known universe, you know. Um, yeah, the, 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 it's funny because as I was just doing very light research for this, but um, some of the things that you realize have. The, the visions of heaven they are actually biblical but mm. they're, they're types they're well, not type they're metaphors as well as mm. um they're not fully descriptive so the things like um gates made of pearl there are in the bible revelation yeah. uh, 21 yeah. um also clouds obviously to be caught up with a cloud so you see how a lot of these things have kind of even harps there is um they're playing harps in heaven. But I think mm. we've taken these basic, uh, you know, images and then we've basically extrapolated it and amplified it and we've made yeah. it everything. Or oh, we made it into caricatures, you know. We talk yeah, about the yeah, pearly yeah. gates. And, yeah, you know, exactly. we don't talk about it in a good way, you know. Exactly. So, all right, that's good. I think, you know what, we encourage everybody. Let me just say this. The only way you get there is through Christ Jesus. And so we put that in the slide if anyone's watching it you know jesus says um you believe in god believe in me and says uh he will prepare a place for us and so that's that's what we believe only through jesus christ can you get there and it's going to be worth it so well I, I like that verse he said if it wasn't true i would have if this weren't so i would have told you he adds that i i find it very interesting you know if it were not so i would have told you i go yes. to prepare a place for you I mean, in a sense, it's almost redundant, you know what I mean? But he's emphasizing, listen, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. This is what's going down, you know what I mean? If it weren't true, I would have told you so, you know? Uh, 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 and so it is something we've got to really remember. Christ said these words. He's going to prepare a place for us.
Perfect. Well, thank you. And uh, big up yourself and uh, right. peace out. Uh, big ups.